In this video, I'm going to teach you how to make automations and macros using Stream Deck and Keyboard Maestro. This tutorial is going to be for Mac users. If you're a PC user, you're going to have to learn how to use Bar Raider for super macros. And I can't tell you how to do that. I've never done that. I don't know how, but it's a very different uh, workflow than Keyboard Maestro. Buy your Stream Deck. Download the Stream Deck software. On the Stream Deck program, go to the Stream Deck store. Type in Keyboard Maestro. You'll have two options. You can use the Keyboard Maestro utility, which I don't know how to use. I was recommended to use KM Link, so that's what I learned how to use, and it's real easy, so just go ahead and install that one. Close the Stream Deck store. Go back to your Stream Deck software. Under custom, you should now have the KM Link plugin right here. The Stream Deck software is gonna be used to configure the buttons and also to create the icon that you see on the button. The automations and macros that you can do on the Stream Deck software are very, very rudimentary and not entirely useful. That's why we need to go to Keyboard Maestro. Go ahead, click that, go to the website, download it, um, you get a free trial. Um, it's only $35 or $36 to purchase it. Uh, very well worth it. I recommend it. Might as well just buy it. Once you've downloaded Keyboard Maestro, you should open it up. It should look something like this. Now we're going to work left to right. So if we go under groups, these are kind of like folders. I'm going to go down to the bottom here. You've got some options. We're going to click plus to create a new folder. You can uh, name that. We'll just call this one test. The folders are where we're gonna store all of our macros. So I'm gonna just delete this one I just made. I can delete that folder by clicking the minus. And I'm gonna go into Wes's macros, which is the one I made previously. So here you can see some of the macros I've made. To create a new macro, again, just go down to the bottom, click plus. This will create a new macro. A macro is basically a set of keystrokes or actions that we're going to program. In other words, automation. So when we're creating our macro, we have two sections here, triggers and actions. With triggers, for the purposes of the Stream Deck, I'm going to create a global macro palette trigger. Now, the rest of these options are for a hotkey. If you, if you would rather have a keyboard shortcut, you can create a hotkey. If you'd rather have a status menu trigger or a typed string trigger. Um, I'm not going to show you those. We're going to select the palette trigger. Okay, now we get into the meat and potatoes. What action do we actually want this thing to do? So when we click new action, we'll get this pop-up window over here and we'll have all kinds of different options for what we can um, have the automation do. Now for example purposes, let's just go back to one that I've already created. So here's the one we were just working on. Let's go to this one called Mute Subwoofer. And let's take a look over here. You can see we've got the macro palette selected. I showed you how to do that. <clears throat> and now here are the actions. So now we have to think very linear and very logically about what each step is going to be. So the first step I needed to do is to open this software called Focusrite Control. The second step I needed to do is to move the mouse to this location where the mute button is. Then I needed to click the mute button. Then I would prefer that it minimized itself and got out of the way. So that's kind of what we've got programmed here. So the first step is to activate Focusrite control. So the way I got that was when we created a new action, we go over here under the applications control folder I activate a specific application and when I click on that this pops up and then we can activate the program that we want it to open. The second step here that I have programmed is for the program to pause for a half a second. Now you may not need to add pauses but if you find that your macro is not running properly you might need to add small pauses between steps in order for it to just slow itself down because it might take a, a brief second for the application to actually open up. 
Uh, so the first step is to open it. The second step is a brief pause to help the program run better. The third step is to uh, unminimize the window. Well, this was kind of just a troubleshooting step that I had because it wasn't quite working just right. Uh, so basically maximize the window just in case uh, it didn't open properly. So I'm going to kind of skip that one. The next step here is to bring that window to the front, which it should automatically do. This is kind of just a fail safe to make sure that when it opens the program that it's actually at the front, which is going to be important for our mouse clicks later. Again, you might not always need to pause it, unminimize it, and bring it to the front. That's just kind of a fail safe. I must have been having some issues with it, and this, for some reason, helped it work. Future Editor Wes here. I probably could have avoided those problems by selecting a different action. Activate, app, activate a specific application might not have been the right uh, button there. There's others like show a specific application, bring application window to the front. One of those actions might have solved that problem. Uh, again, I'm still kind of learning how to use this, so you'll just have to kind of play around with it and figure out uh, easier, better, more effective ways of doing the same thing. So to help you find those actions here, I can just go up here and search for pause. And I wanna be searching all actions. And so now you can see here's the pause. I can insert that. I can click on that and that is what'll bring up this pause. Uh, unminimize and bring window to the front. I can just search. Unminimize. Doesn't wanna find it right now, of course, cause I'm showing you, but um, all of these actions are somewhere in these folders, so you can search through the folders or uh, search using the search box. Okay, so we've activated this program. We've waited a half second. We've unminimized it to make sure it's not minimized somewhere down in our uh, docket here. We've brought the window to the front to make sure that it is the front and center application. Now is when we get into the mouse clicks. So at this point, we should have our given software up at the front. And now what I want it to do is bring my mouse to this coordinate and click. So I click new action. I'm going to search mouse click, move or mouse, move or click mouse. That's the one we want. So click on that and you will come up with this. Now what this is saying is we want to move the mouse and click it at these coordinates, 57x, 400y, from the top left corner of the front window. See, we want it to click at 57, 400 relative to the front window's corner and you can change relative to where you want it to click. So what this is saying, and also here without dragging, I don't want it to drag, but if you want it to drag and hold, that's an option too. So what this is saying then is I wanted to find these coordinates and I'm going to show you how to do that. The easiest way to find those coordinates is to click the get button. Now it gives you five seconds to open up that software and put your mouse and I missed it because I was talking and I'm too slow. I'll try it again. And now make sure it's the front window and put your mouse right there. And when the timer finishes, it will select the coordinates where your mouse was relative to the front window's upper left corner. Now I want it to click one more time on the minimize button so that when I mute it, it'll close this program and get it out of the way. So I'm going to do the same thing here. Another move and click action. So I'll click get. We want to get the coordinates of the mouse. I'll go back here. I'll put my mouse right where I want it. The timer stops. It found the coordinates in my mouse relative to the front window's upper left corner again. And now you should periodically try to run the application um, to see if it's working. I'll run it. It happened pretty fast, but it worked just fine. And I'm gonna click it one more time to do the same thing. And it did it again, so it seems to be working. All right, so we've created a macro in Keyboard Maestro that seems to be working. I've got my mute subwoofer action here. That's the one we just created. 
Now we need to link it to the Stream Deck. So we're gonna go back to our Stream Deck software. We're gonna grab our KM link and drag that in here to create a button. You're gonna title it, mute sub, and then we're gonna select a macro. And the nice thing about KM link is that once we've created our macro in Keyboard Maestro, it'll automatically show up under here. We titled it, here's Wes's macros folder that we created, here's mute subwoofer. I'll select that and that's all there is to it. Now when I push that button, it'll automatically run the macro from Keyboard Maestro. So pretty cool. Here's the one we just created. Here's the one that I already had for the same action. You can see that I changed the button to make it say mute sub and it's got a power button on it. This one here is not working or looking so good. So how do we change the icon to make it look how we want it to look? Well, down here in our options, we can click this little down arrow. We can set from file if we already have an icon that we want, or we can create a new icon, or we can open Stream Deck's icon library. So you can mess around with those. I like to create a new icon. It's pretty easy to do, so let's click that. It'll actually open a new window uh, that takes us to a Stream Deck uh, icon editor. And from here, we can create our own button. So I'm gonna just create some random dumb thing here just to, so I can save it. And I'll click the save button. It opened the downloader here. So there's my new icon. I go back to Stream Deck. I click set from file. That should open up my downloads folder. And here's my Stream Deck key that I just created. Open that up. And here's my new button. I don't want that text on there, so I'm gonna change that here to show title, because now it's just showing the title mute sub. So if I click that button, I can have that show or not, or I could just build the text right into the icon. Another very powerful tool we have is the multi-action switch. So when you hear switch, think of a light switch. You've got two positions, an, an on or an off, or you know, a set one way and a set the other way. So we can use that one. And then when we open that, we have our first position and second position on our switch, like our light switch on and off. And now we can create um, a KM link here on the first setting and a KM link here on the second setting and then you can do the same thing we did before where you build your macro for each setting for the first and second position to show you an example of the multi-action switch let's go to the subwoofer volume button that i made so notice this button is a multi-action switch again so i just drag that multi-action switch here click in i've got my first position second position uh, the first position is going to set the subwoofer volume to 0 dB. The second position is going to set it to minus 16 dB. And it's going to do basically the same thing I showed you with muting the subwoofer. It's going to open up this program. It's going to bring the mouse here. It's going to click and drag up, minimize the software, and done. If I click the Stream Deck button again, that mute or that subwoofer volume button a second time, it'll now move it from 0 to minus 16. So the button has two actions. It'll move it from here to here and from here to here. And those are two different macros that I've got on Keyboard Maestro, subwoofer volume down, subwoofer volume up. So I've got two separate macros on Keyboard Maestro I've entered one of them in here, down and up, and the opposite one here, which it's not showing me right now. And then I also created two separate buttons. So I've got this button and this button to tell me which way the switch is up or down. And that corresponds with my 
volume knob here, my listening knob, so I turn it to this position or that position, and I want the subwoofer to match that volume. That's the purpose of the button. One other note, if you restart your computer or something, you have to reopen Keyboard Maestro and make sure Keyboard Maestro is running in the background, otherwise none of your buttons are going to work. So that's a quick run through on the basics of Stream Deck and Keyboard Maestro. I hope you found that useful. The bulk of the automation again is within Keyboard Maestro. You can find help on the Keyboard Maestro website or YouTube. So far it's worked pretty well for me. There's been a few little minor quirks I've had to work around like I showed you, but so far I've really found it very useful and pretty easy to use.